My name is Chris, and today we're going to talk about killing static. Welcome to the Vital Attack. Since the very beginning of this channel, it seems, the topic of static elimination has been a prevalent one, and rightly so. Static attracts dust, it creates noise, and it can quickly dampen an otherwise enjoyable listening session and ruin your day. Thankfully, there are a host of products available to help eliminate static, but it would seem that the more effective of these are quite pricey. The Milti Zero Stat runs about 100 bucks for what seems to be a toy gun squeezing some sort of crystal inside, while the DSTAT 3 checks in at just over $300 for its effectiveness. Surely the manufacturers know what they have as far as a product and charge accordingly. After all, if you want the best playback of your records possible, you'll most likely need one of their products to make it happen. While we did discover that an inexpensive plasma lighter from Amazon does indeed reduce static on a record, it didn't quite get the results many of us were looking for. So, doing my diligence and research, I came across this an ancient tool whose use I'd long forgotten. Its archaic function lost to me over the years, a presence. A presence I've not felt since. This would appear to be simply a hairdryer, but it claims to be so much more. It boasts that it has an integrated negative ion generator, which produces negative ions to help condition and soften hair while reducing frizz. How does that help us? Well, negative ions can eliminate static, Static that plagues our poor records, especially in the colder, drier months, which lie only just ahead. Now, the downside here is that there's really no way for me to tell if, in fact, this hairdryer indeed is producing negative ions as it claims, and moreover, if it is, what that amount would be. But that's not going to stop me from trying yet another seemingly ridiculous way to try and eliminate static. After all, it was a suggestion from a viewer about it, an odd way to kill static that led me to the plasma lighter and Although not the last word in static elimination, it did indeed work. So I'm going to take a couple test records here that are not up to my standard of play, just in case I melt them a little, and see if we can indeed reduce the amount of static on them using this hairdryer. I'll start with a low temperature and low fan for about 15 seconds to see what we get. If that doesn't work, I'll increase the fan to high, but I'm going to keep the temperature on low as to avoid damage. This dryer also includes a cold shot button which apparently blasts cool air at the intended target. If a high fan setting with a low temperature doesn't do it, I'll try again using the cold shot feature to see if it releases more negative ions for us. Much like the easy vinyl crackers remover that ended up being nothing more than an automotive polishing compound, I don't really expect this to work, but I can't resist the urge to try, and in doing so, hopefully spare some of you the time and money involved. Finally, if all else fails, I think I'll take a bit of high heat to one of these records to see just how dangerous using a hairdryer to eliminate static on a record can be if you're not being mindful of your settings. There'd be nothing worse to find out that this does in fact work only to carelessly set the dryer incorrectly and melt one of your favorite one-step pressings. I'm once again grounded using an anti-static strap around my ankle, so let's grab an album and let's get some reading and find out what the static is on the very first record. Wow, so 13, 10, 3 and a half, 1 and a half. All right, we have our hair dryer. I'm going to set it to low, and I'm going to do a low fan, and I'm going to go about 15 seconds, and I hope it does more than just make noise. Let's find out. Well, the good news is that blow dryer, if nothing else, isn't all that loud. So let's take a reading and see if that had any effect at all. Place your bets now. 9.5, 6 6.5, 2.5, 1. So that is in fact a result, although it's very very, very marginal. I wouldn't call that a positive result or a good result at all. So let's put this one aside. Let's get another record. We'll get a reading on that. And we're going to try a higher fan setting. Mm -hmm. 
12, 12 and a half, 8, 5 and a half. All right, low temperature, high fan setting, 15 seconds. If nothing else, it is doing a very good job of blowing all of the dust and debris off the record. Seven and a half, five, five, four and a half. So we are seeing a little bit of a depreciation in the numbers. A couple of points, a couple of points. Actually, this is a pretty good one. Twelve and a half to five is actually fairly decent. This is only what three points. This is only a point. It's honestly, it's about what I expected. Actually, it might even be a little better than I expected. But now we're going to take our last record, and I'm going to leave it on the high because the high seems to have had a bit of a better result. And then I'm going to hold the cold shot button, and maybe that releases more negative ions. Seven and a half, eight, five, four and a half. Okay, so this is my cold shot button right there. And we'll put it on the high and see if that does anything for us. Last test. Seven and a half, eight, seven, three and a half, three and a half. So it looks to me like this, if nothing else, is incredibly inconsistent. I didn't expect much from this to begin with, and that's quite all right because it was a suggestion, I believe, from a viewer, uh, or it might have been a conversation I was having. And I'm happy to test these sorts of things because you just never know. Again, we came up with a lighter that was about, what, 10 or $15? And if you're in a pinch, it's actually really not a bad way. To, it worked much better than the expensive brush. Well, not expensive, but it was a $30 brush I picked up. That didn't do a damn thing. And the static lighter did, or the, uh, the plasma lighter did. So this isn't really going to do much. It seemed that the best way would have been low temperature and high fan, but... I, I wouldn't recommend spending the $43 that I spent on a hairdryer to try to remove static. It just isn't going to work. I'm not comfortable, now that I think about it, holding this in my hand with high heat to see what sort of damage I'm going to cause. So we're going to forego that. I'm not going to destroy the record because I actually had to go back to my Salvation Army to buy a whole bunch of new test records because I lost all of my test records in the flood. But they're back, they're full of static, as you can see. They haven't lowered a whole lot. They're gonna go back into storage for the next test. And eventually, we're going to have our Battle Royale. But, as I thought, not much of anything to see here. Before you hit the exit, because the video is just about over, I need your help. If you're in a band, or know someone who is in a band, and you, or they, are making vinyl records, I would like to get my hands on some. I have some tests I'd like to perform, some of which will ruin the records, unfortunately, but will serve to promote some quality information here. I'm happy to pay for these albums, I just need music that I can play on YouTube, so I need someone who can grant those permissions and also has records for sale. If this is you, please either drop a comment below or send me an email so we can iron out the details. Don't forget that we still have an Audio-Technica ATLP60X turntable to give away for free at the end of the month so you can head over to my review video of that to learn how to enter. Also, thank you to everyone who has been purchasing shirts, stickers, and signing up for Patreon recently. It really does go a long way to support this channel, and you have my sincere gratitude. Next week, we have another review, so stay tuned for that. And until then, I look forward to next time.